<laughs> All right. Um, oh, like a couple, <laughs> like a couple of miners underground. Underground. <laughs> Hello, you two. How are we doing? Uh, We're doing all right, love. How are you doing? Not too bad. Was that the start? Was the start of this? Movie? I think yes. it's recording already. We're just, we're just jumping this is, in. This is the cold open. <laughs> <laughs> the first line is me talking about coal miners. It's fine. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Except for I didn't it's realize not... what I, I, I shaved yesterday, and I didn't realize how baby I looked, and I look like. You look like your 21 year old portrait. Yes. <laughs> you look exactly the same. I was going to post mine, but I was like, there's no point, you know? I'm no, useful. Like, you look yeah. exactly the same. <laughs> yeah, literally the same. I'm, I'm yeah, loving that. Uh, I'm awesome. loving that shirt, by the way. Oh, thanks. It's new. Um, California. It's like another one of the California little cowboy ones. Oh, I like it. So, it is so soft. <laughs> and you know what I like about it? The back has it too. Whoa. Oh, that is. He looks like a blanket. You have to just live in that forever. Yeah, it's my. <laughs> you know it's... what? I was looking at those photos the other day of like uh, when we were together last, and like I swear Sarah's hair was like only a sliver of gray. It was only. And now yeah. it's like all of it, oh, and so it's like good. yeah, it's so good. It, but <laughs> in so fairness, good. she was still dying her hair at that point too. Mm -hmm. So like she would, like little bits. Yeah, she would do like little bits, but then right after our wedding, she was like. Uh, uh, I'm done. Just go on, let it, let it happen. And now look at her. No, it's very silver. My it has been like five it. years though. Five okay. years. Yeah. Years. Yeah, yeah, crazy. By the way, can you hear us both? All right. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear us? All right. Yeah. Don't. Nice. So you should introduce oh, yeah. them. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's just do it. Yeah. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Ready. Let's go. I'm ready. Gentlemen, welcome back to <laughs> the Matchbook, <laughs> which is, if you haven't known by now, it is the weekly wrap up. All things that we think are cool, noteworthy, interesting, exciting, or deemed worthy of sharing. Uh, this week, we have the most special guests we've ever had in the lifetime of this show because it comes from around the planet. We woke up one of them early. <laughs> we have Ash Raymond James, poet, author, extraordinaire, and Savannah Fibbs, the most amazing, electric, sunshiny personality we've ever been graced to ever meet. Yes. Uh, and you know what? I uh I watched this. I watched with your matchbook videos before doing this, and I was like, Tyler has been so in control. We gotta change that. So like get fucking ready. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> you have been I, I know I'm doing good. Yeah. You, yeah, we're definitely we're definitely gonna change that. You just need to add uh, <laughs> that's all we needed. Wait, I was gonna say that the other thing that Sav has going for her, but then I was gonna mess up the name of the company. Is it it's not yak and yum, is it? No, Lucy oh. and yak. Lucy. Oh, I'm wearing all Lucy and yak. I that figured you right there. <laughs> this is this an advert. <laughs> Lucy and yak aficionado. Sarah has her Lucy and yak uh, apron. apron right behind us. I think you can see it, right? Oh yeah, I was wearing it last. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god, just hang like, oh. <laughs> uh, Anyways, so as you're our guests, I think we should let them go first. Okay. So right, you don't can me... go one and one, or you can like each of you do your two. I don't All care. Right, I'll, I'll, I'll do I'll do one, and then we'll see how we feel about that, and then we'll go from there. <laughs> okay. So what's funny is I wrote these notes last night, and like like these are just like my notes. Um, for some reason it just says anus. Uh, <laughs> not, for some reason <laughs> that doesn't funny. surprise me. Yeah. Look at what my <laughs> notes are on. Oh, yours are even better. All right, so yours. So I small. wrote no notes. No, no. You, That's she, okay. She, yeah, she's fine. You don't need right, notes. You so my first uh my first discussion of something that I found interesting was mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. So all of the stuff that have been that's been invented by mistake. Ooh. Right? Because yeah. so I found that tea bags were actually made by mistake. Cause they were like transported, right, in like silk bags. Okay. And then like somebody put the silk bag in hot water when they weren't meant to. And then that slowly they were like, Oh, this works. So that then from one. that they created. That's it. amazing. They, they, yeah, and there's so much stuff that was like accidentally made, like gunpowder. Yeah, 
like an accidental thing, but that was like a life extending elixir. Yeah, back in China, which is, which is so China. ironic when you think about it. Uh, <laughs> but my favorite one, right, was like in the ninth in the seventeen hundreds, they had laughing gas parties. Okay. Which sounds fucking crazy. So instead of like, <laughs> instead of like just, <laughs> so instead of just drinks, they would like be offered a puff of smoke from a green bag. And it was just like, and that's how anesthesia came about because they were like, oh, I don't feel pain anymore. Oh, wow. What a thing. And yeah, they, but like it was 1700 and they were just like, oh, we discovered a gas. Let's just taste it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the like, best so part is they did it without any guardrails of any kind. So like there was probably people just keeling over because I mean, to use that stuff now, there has to be like doctors there to check. Yeah, doses. Yeah. 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 They used to just go there and just used to be like, oh yeah, let's just have a laugh. And it's just like, so have a puff from this green silk bag. <laughs> this That's green. What could I possibly... feel like if I walked into any house and they were like, puff from my green silk bag, I'd be like, I don't think so. I don't know. I don't know if I want to. But... Yeah, I think I'm going to exit stage. Do you want to know my favorite accidental invention? What hit it? Viagra. I okay. knew you were going to say that. I know. I, I assumed I, it was going to be on Ash's list. I did too. I saved it for I saved it for Tyler. Yeah. I knew, <laughs> I, I knew it would come up. Like you knew. I know him. <laughs> you knew me. It was six to midnight. But I, I mean, how funny is that? That they were like working on heart medication. And then they're like, man, it doesn't seem to be doing that. But the weirdest thing, everyone we tested on just has a boner for like four hours. And they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> old men with heart conditions they well, really like surgery he stopped judging. <laughs> good thing they didn't invent laughing gas and viagra at the same party that would have been the best party though that would have been party a party yeah, that's yeah, probably great. like how they used to throw parties at like the moulin rouge yes i just can't get over that concept of it being like such a such an age of like the 1700s is such a different time yeah. like where you don't have the capability to test stuff and instead of just actually doing it properly, they were just like, this will be fun. Yeah. Well, but they didn't realize yeah. that they could do it properly, right? No. That's the thing. Yeah. No. yeah. I love that. Also, yeah. But there were also mistakes of like nature that you probably know about, like the way that squirrels accidentally plant trees. Yeah. Yes. So like, I feel like, I feel like mistakes as a, as a whole. That's a job. beautiful one. Do you know what go. my favorite one of the accidental nature ones is? Hit it. So, I think it was a was it a fig tree or a date tree? I think it was a oh, fig. fig. Yeah. So they found this fig tree growing in the middle of a mountain that they were like, "There's no possible way that this fig tree could be growing here." And they ended up finding out that well, there's two different ones. So the one that I'm talking about is it was growing up from inside a cave and then growing out through a hole in the cave. And they're like, "How did this ever happen?" So they went in and found out that a guy had run away from a village that he lived in because he was like going to be killed. And he had eaten a fig that day, went oh. into the cave, died in the cave. And then by the time his body became soil, the fig seed was still there and rainwater had come in and made a fig tree grow out of That's the middle crazy. of the cave. And it was That's from his beautiful. stomach. That is such an evolution of things, though. That's just like death and life. Yeah. Right. Very cool. Such a contrast. I love that. Yeah. Well, good one. Mistakes. Number one. I love it. Mistakes. Oh, well, of course, Ash was going to be way better than anything I would ever come up with. <laughs> <laughs> but can you pass me my phone? Uh, this is exactly how. I feel like I you will we'll probably know these things. But this is also, one of my... can I just say something? Yeah. Sav, since living back at home, your accent has gotten forty percent more Kiwi. <laughs> we yeah, had this, like, we had like we had a literal conversation yesterday, right? And before we went to bed, and I was having a breakdown because she was like, "Oh, the bear spot," and I was where I was like, "Where is the bear?" And spot? I was like, like yeah. and I was and like, he was like, "Where's the no, bear I spot?" <laughs> and I was like, "The one you drink," and he was like, "What?" And I was what like, "What bears, bears do we drink?" Like, bears. <laughs> she, like, she meant beer. She meant beer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my name's Britt. I'm from New Zealand. <laughs> we just like I was having a breakdown, man. I was like, "Where's the bear spot?" And she just kept going bear, and I was like, "What fucking bear? What bear?" <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. 
Yeah, I love it. I love hearing it just like reemerge from the depth of her soul. <laughs> like every week, I just understand it less. You know, no. <laughs> we're, we're like two weeks away from having to do notes. <laughs> like, <laughs> I can't wait for Ash to start picking up little Welsh Kiwi bits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be fun. <laughs> All right, Seth, sorry, we interrupted you. And I feel like he gets more, his accent gets stronger when he talks to you. It's fine. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is one of my favorite books. It's called The Honey Queen. Oh my gosh. Because then I was going to like segue into a B fact. Because why not? I love, love this. But I feel like you might know this already. You would definitely. But, <laughs> <laughs> but do you know that the bee queen mates once in its lifetime, right? I do and know in that. the first 10 days, it will mate with like... 10 to 15 drones which are male bees she dirty which is what they're called right that's why drones are called drones mm. but anyway so then she keeps inside of her a hundred million sperm for her whole lifetime <laughs> that's a lot what? of sperm <laughs> yeah because she she made like she <laughs> but she goes into the air and apparently like does this dance with like 10 to 15 male bees and yeah <laughs> wow. all the sperm and yeah. I had no idea about that. That really shocks me because I would just, I was just like the, like I would just expect you to know that. I would just. Well, okay. So here's my question for you. So, like, if you looked at ratio of sperm size to body size, so like a human, okay, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, hundreds of millions of sperm for a human is like a teaspoon. So does the proportionality switch, like even get smaller? So does like bee sperm even be smaller than people? Oh, well, sperm? sperm has to be to the individual, right? It has to be. So it has to be proportionately small, right? <laughs> like look, because if not, then I was just imagining that she has like a. I can't. I cannot. Look. I cannot imagine a bee ejaculating the same. <laughs> <as> <laughs> It's an it's an incredible image, but I don't see it happening. <laughs> like a tiny little yeah, honeybee, and it's just like stuff. a whole splatter of stuff on the table. You're like, oh god. He has not done the scientific research, but like that is he has the facts. All right. I love it. That's amazing. So wait, it's like a, it's like a mating slide. Um, it's like it's about like three different people, and it goes through like their lives. But one of them like keeps bees, and it's really interesting. Yeah, it's so like a really beautiful like. It's a book of friendship and love. <laughs> we also watched the film the other day called oh. The Beekeeper, and you we did, and that's film. different. That's not a it's well, it's... Jason Jason's trade film. Oh, don't yeah. tell me it's a bad film. It's a great. Film. No, no, I'm not saying it's a bad uh, film. I just know it's not about like it's about friendship. It's not about bee sperm. If that <laughs> <laughs> apparently the bee... there needs to be a documentary. Well, I don't even want the beekeeper was actually is like this like insane. Like assassin? Yeah, he's an assassin. Yeah. And he just keeps Whoa. Bees. Whoa. Yeah. Does he use bees in assassinations? Uh, no, actually. No. It would be you like, if you didn't have Sarah. He like satisfyingly like, makes honey though. Which is I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah. All right. So I love like it. Be like the last person against like the evil of humanity. Type I thing. love it. So different <laughs> yeah. than your book, but equally as meritable. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right. Well done. <laughs> I think we go around. I think you should do one each. Okay. Okay. I can do one. Yeah, uh, my first one on the crown of Buddha's head. Um, it is, it's an article that I will link after we're done talking about it, but it is the origin of 15 of the most famous and pervasive urban legends. Oh, because all of them okay. have like an actual origination. And so like the first one was about Candyman. Which is a movie that oh, scared man, the pants so off of us when we were kids. They yeah. remade it. The remake was good, but like didn't have the same fear factor as the original. Uh, so Candyman was one of them. You know the urban legend about um, the like the guy who fell asleep and then felt his dog lick his hand while his arm dropped off the bed, and then when he woke up, there was a note that said humans can lick too. What? That's an urban legend. The origin of that, and then. <laughs> And then the other one was um, that the kid who was Mikey on the Life commercial that he there was the urban legend that he died because he he was the first one that they said that died from mixing pop rocks and soda. What? That's where that whole legend came from about if you mix pop rocks and soda you'll die. 
It was because the kid from the life Wait, did cereal. he really die? No. Oh. To the point well, where... That is so weird, though, because that's like the whole, like, if you eat an apple seed, it grows like a tree. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so all of these urban legends have origins. And, like, the one about the Pop Rocks and the soda, they actually went to the, the little boy's mom at one point, and they're like, Life Cereal said this, and Pop Rocks said this. They're like, can you do a commercial that says that you're, like, with your kid to show he's not dead weird. from this? And, <laughs> and they refused to do it. So, like... <gasps> it, so for like Pop Rocks like went out of business for years because people thought you would die. Oh and, no. And then they but now they're kind of back. Someone bought them. But like so there's 15 different urban legends that oh. all have like real tr- like origins. Like the Mothman in New Jersey. Oh, the Mothman, I heard him. Yeah. But like, like what a thing to derail your business. Like I know. Somebody, that's wild, like, so bro. Funny. There's so many things. Like the like the, just the world without internet is fantastic. But it's like, like just but it's uh-huh. like MSG, right? Like yes, yes. Like MSG, but it's not actually bad. Like no. it's not it's bad like, at all. No, it's just it feels like a racist thing, actually. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, yes. So it's just, bad. It's just like another salt, different. right? It is just another but flavor. Like some people are like, yes. it will kill you instantly. Yeah. <laughs> well, and the reason that is is because one scientist was he a scientist or a doctor wrote an article as a joke yeah. saying that MSG was he wrote it as a joke it was for like, one of his friends. Yeah, it was like a goof with one of his buddies. So bad, isn't it? And it stuck. And he to this I think he died. He died but now. his his kids told like did an interview and said until the day he died he felt horrible about that yeah. because he no matter how many times he said this was not real People didn't, it was too late. Well, like and, it had already. Well, yeah, because everyone has like no MSG. No yeah. MSG. And so he like so effectively, he caused like Chinese food restaurants all around the yeah. country to go out of business because people were like boycotting yeah, them. They're like, MSG will kill you. What? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> so yeah, wow. there's. So it's, it's hard to determine whether that's positive or the negative of having the internet. Because I know. True. Like at least now we can sort of prove stuff wrong, but there's too many lies now. Well, yeah. and here's the big one. Like right now, Taylor Swift is they're debating the lawsuit about all of those deep fakes of her. Like there's all these, there's like all these oh, like yeah. something that got like 45 million views in like two hours. Someone made deep fake pornography that looks exactly like Taylor Swift using her actual image. And so now there's like, like you just said, the internet can like help you know prove against some myths but then in other cases like people full-on believe that that's taylor swift in these there's no way she but here's here's the other thing i don't want to get too off topic about like uh about deepfakes but like there was like a literal lady who was like there was like a news on it and she contacted the police and everything and they were like we cannot do anything yeah right like now like now it's taylor swift people care more yep exactly it's like it's like there's still people. <laughs> I know. It's like, can we? They still matter. Like, I know. <laughs> so like, only because it's Taylor matter. Swift, it, it it doesn't just matter then, right? Yep. Like, if something bad happens to you, you just gotta hope. The world, though. You just gotta yeah, hope it happens to Taylor Swift. About famous people more than normal. People. If I get a mystery illness, I just gotta hope Taylor Swift gets it. Otherwise, I'm, do- otherwise I'm gonna die. You know. <laughs> like, <laughs> if Taylor Swift has had Alzheimer's, it would be cured tomorrow morning. <laughs> exactly yeah. like like we just gotta <laughs> that's the solution whatever the world whatever's give ailing it to the... taylor swift give it to taylor told swift. me another random thing is that betty crocker wasn't actually a person which i find so weird yeah yeah she was made up she's a <laughs> fictional character she's not real <laughs> yeah no she's not real man yeah. Yeah. We, we broke, broke tyler's heart oh. i know we Isn't that crazy? Crazy? That yeah. is so weird. We have our cookbook behind us. I'm never reading it again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'm right. Like, uh, no, I haven't, I haven't done a deep research, yeah. but like, that's I'm amazing. Sure. Weird. All right, Sarah, okay, you're up. Speaking of cookbooks, okay, so Tyler and I just finished reading the first three um, of the. Oh man. What is it called? Uh. A Court, Court of, of Thorns, Thorns and Roses, and Roses series. The series. Oh, like, okay, yeah. Like Ver- it's like fairy porn. Fairy porn books that are nice. super exciting and fun to read. So I the only reason I'm saying this is because this book that I accidentally checked out at the library, I have been more into this book than I was into the fairy porn book. Wow. <laughs> like, oh, that's is, true. I cannot stop. 
reading it. All I do is think about it. Um, she even reached out to the co-author of it. And, and she wrote, and she wrote back. So sweet. Um, so it is called Bread Song. Um, the library did a really oh. dumb placement of the sticker, but look at how adorable these two are. So oh, this so is a father and daughter. Um, and it's called Bread Song, How Baking Changed Our Lives. And so Kitty, the girl that is in this book, she was... Um, <laughs> I think 14. Don't take the sticker I was just going to move no, it. No, 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 don't. Oh. Um, the library book. That felt like home, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, so anyway, I checked, right there. I checked it out because I thought it was just going to be recipes for bread, which obviously is perfect. The Albert. But the story behind it is that um, when she was 14, I think she was 14. Um, she all of a sudden had crippling anxiety and she couldn't eat. She couldn't sleep. She couldn't go to school. She couldn't do anything. And so her dad and mom took turns taking care of her and staying home with her. And her dad would try all of these things to try and bring her out of her depression and her anxiety and nothing worked. He tried all kinds of different things. And then one of the last things that he tried was baking bread with her and something clicked and she just like came to life. And she uh. was so into it. So they end up, they ended up opening a bakery and it's in Watlingford and we are Watlington, Watlington. That's not far from your home. I know. If you, if you lived in the UK again, you could go visit her bakery for me and tell her hello. <laughs> um, tell her I love her. Uh, that's, yes. that's an incredible story. It's amazing. And so. Um, I love the yeah. transition between fairy porn. And- yeah. I don't know. <laughs> There's a slight part of me that was like, I'm it really a, sad that this isn't fairy fuck food right now. Uh, right? I know it's a really that was a weird transition, but I just had to like set the stage. Yes, I am so obsessed with this story and the like. It's just the sweetest story ever, and I and, absolutely love and it. And I will say too, today for the first time, I found out where the term bread song comes from. So Sarah made some homemade bread today. She made jalapeno. Cheddar. Cheddar sourdough bread. Yum. And Yum. when she pulled it out of the oven, she goes, Tyler, come here. That's what bread song is. That's where the name came from. So it's when a loaf comes out of the oven and you can hear like it, it still crackling. crackling. Yeah, it's gonna ca- yeah. That's yeah. where the term bread song came and from. And that, that was her first Instagram That's post. A, it's like a little I've never actually thought about that. That's such a nice term though, isn't it? I, I know. know. Yeah. Isn't that great? I love it. So I'm I'm fully invested. Tyler bought me a, a my own copy. So when I oh, no. the library, I'll have it. <laughs> Without um, the annoying barcode. I know. Yeah. <laughs> that was a really weird choice. I don't like look, like, at this. Oh, look at the negative space right here. Wait, but also just underneath, surely, or on or the back. Really? On the side. Yeah. There's so much negative I space in that cover. Room. I'm moving it and look at the back. Yeah. I'm re- I'm moving it today. Open. I'm no, moving it and re-gluing it. Tyler's so moving it today that he's gonna have to buy another copy for the library. Yeah. I know. <laughs> it's worth it. Well, you know, they have to owe me because I was the one who broke up the fight at the public library That's three true. days ago. That is true, yeah. The least broke up a fight. He did, yeah, between home there was homeless people. Yeah. Oh, no. Tyler, of course, went right in the middle. <laughs> and yeah. talked this is, to both this of them. This is always my fear. Yeah. The best part, though, mine too. Was mine. when I went oh, over ninjas, and he's like, "I got this." Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't know if you do, dude. Like, Mountain lions. Like, what Gregory, yeah. what Gregory was saying. He was yeah. like, "You'd want Tyler in a fight," and we were like, "Yeah, we would." But he would definitely like, maybe not cause the fight. No. But I'm always find the fight. Yeah, I'll find. Oh, so not not cause yeah. it, but he will. He will find it. I don't start fights. And put us in the middle. I end them. <laughs> That should have been in the beekeeper. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'm gonna. Can I jump ahead and do my second one in case I have to pop out? What? Yes. Okay. Is that okay? Well, we'll just go backwards yeah. through. Okay. 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 Yeah. So my second one, no, sh- is not a shock. It's a recipe. What? No um. way. <laughs> Who would have ever guessed? Shock, <laughs> shock and horror. Uh, oh my no. god! I'm astounded. <laughs> okay. So this recipe. <laughs> Tyler's sister gave us, and it's for one-hour cinnamon rolls because 
the only thing about cinnamon rolls that I don't love is that you can't make them fast. Yeah. <laughs> so this, but I never have tried a recipe, a fast recipe that is actually good. And these oh, ones wow. are amazing. They literally are. She did them in an hour and they are. They're so oh, I made that. Insane. Yep. I will link the recipe below. So McGraw, thank you for this. Have recipe. you rewritten this one in here yet? Uh, no. Not oh, yet. she's rewriting all her recipes in a cuter fashion. A completely is... unnecessary task. <laughs> and is it, and is it tidier? It is tidier. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. So the time is happy. Me because I have so many recipes everywhere. It's yeah. like, it's in the process of being tidier, but clearly. I got like a little folder. Yeah. She's going to do like starting. She's oh, gonna cool. do like, That's a really nice book. Oh, it's really nice. Like... And she's going to do little watercolor paintings. Little oh, nice. That's what my granny does. My granny has this whole book of recipes but she has like cutouts of newspaper ones like so much yeah. that's my favorite thing oh that's great yeah. there, once you're thinking of throwing that out remember she was saying oh no because she has a whole box yeah of them. she was, she was like to... i'm never gonna use any of these recipes but she has like this that selects like she's in the throw that out granny what you doing and she was <laughs> like okay come just need to recite I have, yeah oh. I, have, I have to pop out but i'm gonna do one more thing really quick um okay. album Oh. Holly Humberstone, paint the bedroom, paint my bedroom black. Her entire album is amazing, yeah. and I'm sorry. I, I feel to... like I feel like we all just have to move to Scotland. Um, Sav and Sarah can open a bakery, and yes. me and Tyler, <laughs> me and Tyler will just do shenanigans. We yeah. don't know we'll what do we're doing. and we'll have a room in the back for spoken word poetry. <laughs> I love you all. Let's yeah, talk. done, done. Love you. We love you. We love seeing you. Oh, well, now I have to just be alone. Oh man, worry, we got we we can look after you. We got you. Look at all the You're off the leaf. Look You're at all the, the space leaf, I have. <laughs> we got so much room now. <laughs> Thank God. Look at this. Okay, I love you. Guys. Love you. Love, love you. you. All right. So what? What is your second? This. Uh, okay. My second is a documentary that is only 13 minutes long that you can watch on the YouTube for free. It was made by The Guardian, a UK staple. Um, it's called Winter Keeper. And it is Ooh. the true story. This will give you a little example of where we live. It's at Yellowstone National Park. Uh -huh. Every year when the park shuts down, they still have to have somebody live there and stay there. That's job is to take care and protect the park and the animals. And it's one guy. So he lives alone in Yellowstone National Park. And he is the winter keeper. And Whoa. he and literally his job is to like keep the animals safe from like poachers or whatever. And it's the documentary that follows him on a winter in Yellowstone National Park as the winter keeper. And like talk about like cool names, bread song. How cool would it be if people were like, what's your job? And you're like, I'm the winter keeper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Like weird though that we've had the beekeeper and the winter keeper. That is weird. <laughs> it is weird. That's Tyler's version. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's I'm... cool that I think. Maybe. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah the documentary, good. it's beautiful. And the reason why it's so important right now is that they it's really uncertain what's gonna happen with the future of Yellowstone National Park with climate change and you know yeah. everything. And so then that even puts his position into a great deal of uncertainty because if winters change so significantly, which they are right now, like it's been the weirdest winter here. We went from, it was like in the fifties all through December, we had, had not had one drop of snow. And then all of a sudden with still no snow, it dropped to like 58 below zero Fahrenheit here. And it was that way for two straight weeks then it snowed like two feet and now it's 56 degrees again and all the snow is melted. And like the grizzly bears are coming out of hibernation already two months early oh. because it's so warm. And so with all these weird changes, they're wondering what will like the future of the park be? Oh no, our free okay. meeting will end in 10 minutes. We can do this. We can do this. <laughs> so yeah, that's my other one. Um, I, and then I have one more at the end, but right. Sav, it's you. Oh. Um. Oh yeah, yeah. But also, like, got the uh. There's also this other documentary which I'll put in a list, and it's called Nest, and it's about like these people in Iceland where they 
build a treehouse and it's 22 minutes for a documentary oh that's really beautiful um it's and it's just about that and like this this there's no plot it's just, it's just real life changing he's yeah, just filmed really cool. it of them I, building this treehouse i gotta watch that i'll, I'll link you all right okay. so have your look at this <gasps> this is a pin badge of pins i've collected do you recognize do you recognize i uh, only see it says on it, it does says that say glen co yeah oh <laughs> from our hike that day at the yeah. visit i know so that's more the important one and then i've got like new york ones this I is only seven of them because obviously i have a lot of pins that i collect yes but ash got me this to put them on because they were just that... in like a jar you know is it cool yeah this it's like awesome. it's like the cooler version of a Girl Scout sash. Right? So just so everyone knows that we have this thing where we just say, look at this, and then we just show stuff. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look at this. Hey, look, that, speaking of, we need to get that tattooed at some point. At least yeah, I we do. We, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So not much to it. <laughs> no, I love that. But it's just like it's just like everywhere she's been. Like this was like Hobbiton last year, and then like this one was for Christmas, and this was when she was in New York. Yeah. Like this is when I was like... obsessed with uh, Riverdale, but then it got really shit. Yeah, it and did then... get shit. Yeah, yeah, it was terrible. But like that's so it's just a really nice like little. I love that. Because right? like yeah. on a nice little thing, right? I right, got love it. it. All right, this, Ash. This, you you, you got to like this one because it's like because it's up your alley. But I I I was doing some research into the afterlife. Okay. Of like traditions. Because like I was watching the Orville, right? Which is a really good show. Okay. And, like, they found they found a they found like this race of people in the show that like were buried with maps to find their way back to the living. And I was like, yeah, holy lord. But like it's obviously yeah. fake fictional, right? So I was like, sure. how close how close can we get in the real life? Yeah. Wow. So I done a dig to it and I found out that the Egyptians would bury their dead with maps. Because they had to get through a place called the Jewett. Really? Get... It was like a challenge after they died. Whoa. Like like a gladiator contest after yeah, death. That's so stressful. Yeah, yeah. So it was, so it was <laughs> oh, like an Egyptian hell, but totally different. Not not like hell at all. It was just like, instead of endless torture, it would just like be the denial of an afterlife. Oh. So basically so... like purgatory or bardo. Yeah, sort of. Yeah. Because like, and it says here... And there were no demons, but the sun god Ra appeared in his ram-headed form. Okay. Which sounds pretty demonic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but like, yeah, so they would just be buried with these maps. And then if you look it up online, I'll, I'll link you so you can put it in there. But you can actually find a map of the Jewett. And then like... That's and incredible. Yeah. That is incredible. And like that was just sort of so fascinating to me how uh, you just had this really hard time dying. <laughs> and now they're like... <laughs> Here's a challenge. You're not there yet. Yeah. It's like, and then you have to earn. One. You have to uh, earn the fucking. You have to earn your afterlife. Wow, man, dude, you have. Have you read Lincoln and the Bardo yet? I don't think so. No. You have to read that book, both of you, because it's. So the Bardo is a is a Buddhist belief. It's basically purgatory. It's it's like when somebody dies before they're able to be born again or never need to be born again, they get stuck in the bardo. And it's like this in-between place where you have to resolve all of the unresolved things that your karma and life created. And so like one of the guys in the bardo, you will love this. It's so poignant and beautiful. He was like a, a hunter in his life, like a big game hunter. And so when he gets to the Bardo, he has so much bad karma from all the creatures that he's created that he cannot move forward and be born again to like start over until he apologizes and like lays on the ground and prostrates in front of every single creature he's ever killed from like every ant all the way up to like the elephant that he killed on a big game hunt. And so like in his purgatory is a line of, thousands and thousands of creatures that he has to like apologize to and beg forgiveness from before he's able to come back yes it was exactly it's that sort of thing right and yeah but it's uh but you have to see it and they've built like a little mat it's really cool but there were so many weird ones i'll read you one more i got time for five minutes we're good okay. um <laughs> one from <laughs> but one from like like filipinos are, are insane i've learned um i don't know how to say this how do you say that do you think Tinguan? 
Oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry if I say this wrong. Tinguan people. The Tinguan people dress the deceased in the fanciest of clothes. Okay. And then they then they sit the body on a chair, often placing a lit cigarette in the lips, while the Benguet people blindfold their dead before placing them in chairs at the entrance of their home. The people then dress children attending the funerals in, in red to lessen the chance that they will see ghosts. And then there's also the Sagada. <laughs> then in the Sagada region, they they, feed, they have coffins hung from cliffs, bringing the souls of the dead closer to heaven. I've seen that. While, wow, while that people in Kavit often entomb the deceased vertically in a hollowed out tree chosen by the person before death. That is hollowed amazing. In Tibetan yeah. Buddhism, they do sky burials where they put the body yeah. high and they let the birds have them. The, the vultures. <gasps> yeah, the Tibet. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, the Vikings would, was it the Vikings that put them out to sea? Who puts them out to sea? Oh, yeah, yeah, Viking burials. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So then I guess they're going to nature. You right? just get thrown on top of a mountain. I wrote a poem about that. Yeah, you just get thrown on top of a mountain. <gasps> and they don't care. All right, thrown. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, man. I want to see these maps. Yeah, so you're gonna I'll post to. in a, I'll put in like a, a little picture of the map. I'll message you and I'll, ma I'll, I'll send all this stuff over. Also, look okay. how long my hair is now. Oh my days. It goes all the way that. there. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> That's how long it's been since it, you're growing it because you refused to cut it after the last mm -hmm. time you saw us. She's yeah. in protest. She's not going to cut it till, till you, till you're there. You, you've got to have the first snip. <laughs> You know, I, I don't know about that. Oh, I would do a great job. Are you doing <laughs> great? Look at him. All right, I have one more. All right, the finale. Yeah, it's a little bit of our own horn tooting. It is okay. for those who don't know, somewhere on the spectrum, the video podcast series. There's Ooh. many people that don't know that Ash and I and Sav and Sarah were in an episode as well. There it is. We used to have, <laughs> and we're bringing it back. We have yeah, a bringing it back. series about what it's like to be on the autism spectrum. And we have, I think there's like, is there 12 or 13 episodes? 14, 14 episodes. Yeah, that's yeah. wild. And I will link to them and they are amazing and beautiful. And we're bringing it back. It's going to, we're um, more shenanigans. Our most popular episode featured Sav and Sarah. Uh, <laughs> because <laughs> we're not we're not quite cool enough to we're pull not. it off on our own but like we did good like but we did good but, but we just weren't <laughs> visually appealing either that's at really part point, of it at one point you were wearing a shirt backwards i uh, was yeah it was and yeah just so and, you, and your big yellow bottle my big, my big yellow bottle. bottle i need a, i need a new bottle for this series he's you got do. a yellow bowl got a big yellow bowl oh <laughs> that'll do there you go, big yellow ball, big yellow ball. Big yellow ball. I, think, <laughs> I think we have 30 seconds left, so. All right, hit it. We'll just say, oh, we have a I minute did. and, oh, no, we have a one minute and 34 seconds left. Okay. So okay. we'll just say, this has been a pleasure. We miss you guys with every drop of our little hearts. Oh. And we need to see each other sooner than later. Make yeah, it happen. It's, it's ridiculous that you've seen Gregory before you've before seen us. Have? And yeah, well, like that you've seen him and that he's seen you before we've seen you or we've seen him. Yeah, him and Ash had the longest hug as well. Oh, I, I hugged it. I just didn't, didn't let him go. I was like, I'm going to keep you here forever. Dude, he, uh, it's funny how often he asks about both of you. He was so excited to get to see you because every time we've talked since the wedding, like one <laughs> every time he's like, how are Ash and Sav doing? Every single time we ever talk. So he, he's the most adorable little hobbit. Um, he totally um, is. <laughs> He has, a, he has a new song coming out with the very popular, very famous Noah. Is it Kahan? Is that how you say it? Yeah, Kahan, yeah something like that. Yeah, Kahan. Yeah. 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 So lovely to see you. We love you so much. We um, love you. Um, I'll hit stop on the recording, but and it might let us keep going. We'll see. No, that cut. They'll they'll kick us. Of course. Well, I love you guys. Love we you. love you, and we'll see you soon. And, see you and soon. next week, we'll be back with something. I don't know. Boom. <laughs>